Good morning, everyone. My name is Jermel Quilopo, and welcome to today's webinar, Payment Automation, Your Business Continuity Plan. I'm the Partner Marketing Manager here at Invoice Pay, and so welcome to this webinar. As you can see, we're all remote and working from home, so just to let you folks know, if we do run into um, any audio difficulties because GoToWebinar's platform is obviously on a really a big, uh, a big bandwidth, um, we would ask for you folks to stay on, and we'll have some speakers re-sign in for the broadcast. But just to go over some um, house rules for the webinar, um, we'd love to hear from you and interact with you. If you have any questions or have any technical difficulties, we have Jason Christofferson who is on standby, who's our video producer, and he'll be able to help you. And we also wanna let everyone know that everyone is muted on this webinar to ensure sound quality. And after the webinar, um, we will be sending everyone a webinar recording. And just to let everyone know, Invoice Pay is a publicly traded company with Fleet Core. And on the screen, you're seeing our forward looking statement. And if you have any questions in regards to this, we'll be happy to answer those questions offline. And today's subject matter experts. I am pleased to introduce Derek Halpern and Josh Cyphers to today's webinar. Um, actually, Derek, can you please introduce yourself for the people on the webinar? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good morning, everybody, and good afternoon to those on the uh, East Coast. Uh, my name is Derek Halpern. I am the SVP of sales here at Invoice Pay. Uh, I've been in technology industry for about 20 years with a 10 years experience helping companies automate the AP and AR process. I'm really focused on removing paper from the process and more specifically at Invo and Invoice Pay, removing the check from the business, business process. Um, passionate about improving how AP and AR departments work together. Um, and today, uh, really the goal to figure out how we help organizations in this uh, trying and um, unprecedented time to get uh, payments out the door in a mo more efficient and effective way. So thank you for the opportunity and glad to be speaking with you all. And Josh, could you tell everyone on the webinar a little bit about yourself as well? Sure, thanks, Jamal. Hello, I'm, my name is Josh Cyphers. I'm the Vice President of Product Strategy here at Invoice Pay. I'm a former CPA with over 20 years experience in various consulting, finance, and accounting roles. I've worked for companies, uh, very small startup companies, as well as Fortune 100 companies such as Nike and Microsoft. I've spent a lot of time in, in large and small organizations helping streamline processes and improve um, processes and maintain kind of costs and mitigate risks in, in challenging and diff difficult times such as these. Thank you, Josh, for that. And so currently with the global crisis that's happening, there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, I know the global economy has definitely shifted the way governments, businesses, and even consumers um, have responded to it. And with that, a lot of states have created a stay at home order. That's why a lot of us are working remotely, but a, and a lot of businesses have had to shut down offices. Derek, um, what is the current situation that you think a lot of businesses are facing right now? Well, I, I think they're all in different phases. Um, dependent on probably first of all when you were uh, told to sort of shelter in place and the non-essential businesses closing um, you know I, I know that in San Francisco that happened uh, about a month ago um, and it's again periodically uh, you're seeing state to state go that direction I think uh, invoice pay we've been at home for about two weeks now um, so I think some folks are starting to settle in and address some of the challenges and getting to sort of back to some semblance of day-to-day -day and but others are just trying to figure out some of the basics. So I think it's a little bit all over the map depending on, you know, when your business uh, asks you to go remote. And what about you, Josh? What are you thinking of how all of this is affecting the way businesses operate? Yeah, of course, it's no mystery that difficult economic times are ahead and we're all kind of bracing for that. As you can see in the stock markets, they've already begun kind of adjusting for that. The reality is most businesses may not have fully experienced it yet, but it's coming and we all see it. We just don't know how long and how bad. Added on top of that complexity or that difficulty itself is having a remote workforce and finance and especially accounts payable historically has not been a team that you would have remotely. So having the added complexity of, of creating an AP team remote is it, very difficult, especially in challenging economic times. You know, with, with you saying that AP teams are having to work remote, what do you think um, you know, some people are saying that some industries aren't created equal. So what are the big impacts that you think AP teams are going to see? Yeah, I was amazed when I saw this stat. When I think through the AP teams I've been a part of or the AP processes I've been involved in, 
there is a shift towards electronic means and, and using more cloud services. But for the most part, AP teams are in the office. They are physical employees who generally don't work remotely. So to see that 84% were working or starting to work from home already was, was very surprising but encouraging. Um, I think there are technologies out there that are enabling AP teams to do most of their job remote, but there's still things that come in the mail. There's still paper invoices. There's still paper checks. And they're just some of the telephony services or messaging and communication services that are difficult for AP teams to use from their own homes. Thanks for that, Josh. And we actually are going to start launching our first poll question. So we want to hear from you that are on the webinar right now. How significant has working from remote um, have uh, affected your supplier payments? So Jason, can you launch that uh, uh, question and poll? And as we're doing that, one other thing that I want to be able to call out on is we're talking a lot about the AP team, and Josh, maybe you can comment on this, but there's a lot of communication that happens between the AP teams and their suppliers or their AR teams as well. Um, it, it's my experience that those AR teams are also um, in the office, um, and I know we'll touch on this a little bit later, but Josh, any thoughts there on AP and AR, and is that an additional challenge that both sides aren't used to working from home? Yeah, I think it is. And you can solve part of that by having phone services uh, remotely, but it's still challenging when you need to get to documents and a lot of the documents are stored in your file cabinet or the person who normally sits next to you has that document or has that information that you need um, or the contact information for your, that your corresponding AR uh, team, you know, at your supplier's company is, is, is in a file somewhere or, or written down somewhere. Um, so having all that centralized and in your ERP is, is definitely beneficial. Now, accessing your ERP remotely is challenging as well. Uh, a lot of times, whether you're using remote desktop or, or some sort of VPN, mm -hmm. if your ERP is not already cloud enabled, it's going to slow down. The, the reduced bandwidth, as we talked about earlier, is going to impact access to your systems and just slow everything down. Hey, Jason, can you please close that uh, poll and then share the answers on the screen? All right, so it says 39% had said significantly, 52% not significantly, and 9% have said no impact. I still have to go to the office. Are you too any, uh, surprised on any of the uh, results that we got there, Jason, and uh, Josh, or Derek? Not, not I terribly am, uh... surprised. So. <laughs> Yeah. It's unfortunate people yeah. still have to go in the office, but that's the state of AP for sure. No, for sure. And so for a lot of AP teams, they're bogged down with already endless and mundane tasks. Josh, what are some of the challenges that accounts payable uh, departments face? There's so many, and it's really a lot of a lot of groups face challenges. Um, AP in particular, because at cash is such a liquid asset. It's the one thing you don't want to go out the door incorrectly. Especially in these economic times, cash, cash conserva conservation is going to become particularly important. And so, all these things around fraud and risk, exception handling, vendor data management, international payments, there's just so many complexities to making payments to the right people and ensuring they're the right payments for the right amount. And so, already AP has a lot on their plate. And then, now with everyone having to work remotely, uh, a lot of those challenges are then amplified, correct, Josh? Yeah, not only are you adding the complexity of enabling a remote workforce and allowing them to have the tools and systems they need to work remotely and, and access all the information they need to get their jobs done, but now every almost every one of these, besides maybe growth management in this economic climate and, and as a remote employee, just becomes more difficult. Exception handling, finding the right person, finding the right documents to make sure that the payment process is correctly, control and visibility if you don't already have an online or cloud-based approvals, system set up, you know, it could be as simple as someone needing to sign a check. And so you need to go to somebody's house and get them to physically sign a check to mail out. Simple things like that become amplified um, and become bigger problems now with, with the remote workforce. And of course, with the economic environment, your suppliers are going to be inundating your teams with questions and requests and trying to get paid sooner. We tended to see in an economic downturn an increase in AR hiring staff which just means you're going to get more phone calls from your suppliers and those AR teams are going to be trying to accelerate payments while you're trying to conserve that cash. 
Thanks for that, Josh. And you know, as businesses continue to operate, continuities is, is essential, especially when it comes to their payment workflow. And so the second uh, question and polling that we'd want to uh, know right now is, right now for you folks that are on the line, what's your focus to keep AP payments processing? And then we'll have Jason launch that poll right now. So if you could answer uh, right now, what's your focus to keep AP payments processing? So we're gonna wait a little bit right now as those answers um, trickle in. Okay, uh, Jason, we can go ahead and close that poll. And so, and you can go ahead and share that. So a lot of people that are on the line right now are saying 31% is establishing a remote, a remote workforce. So actually uh, creating those invoice processing and approvals. And so that's a good answer for us to know so that we can make sure that we go more in depth on that. And so with businesses having continuity plans, uh, Derek and Jason, a lot of people, um, may not have a payments continuity plan. And so why is it so important for companies to have a payments continuity plan attached to their business continuity plan based on this payments readiness model that we see on the screen? Josh? <laughs> yeah, so obviously kind of step one is getting the essentials down, right? And I call this the basics. They're gonna need computers at home. Um, a lot of times you'll need to, buy laptops or find laptops in the building if you, if you have some on inventory. Um, they're going to need telephones and some sort of phone routing because most of the, the people who are trying to contact your AP team will likely have a centralized phone number. So how do you route those kind of calls to your to your individual employees' homes or wherever they're, they're working remotely? As well, of course, internet access, their office setup, and mindset's an important one. Um, like I mentioned, AP teams generally they are in the office. They're very close knit group. They tend to talk amongst themselves as as the needs arise, and and keeping them separate and keeping them in the remote workspace, you are going to run into morale issues and and hopefully not productivity issues. Uh, but you do need to look at maintaining that kind of remote workforce and do so in an efficient, mm -hmm. productive way, which is kind of mm -hmm. step two. Now that you've got the essentials or the basics. Um, you've got to make sure you can process things and get payments made and, and do the approvals that, that are need to be in place. And really, I, that kind of leads you into step three or the third stage of this readiness model, and that's maintaining your internal controls in a remote remote environment. Um, that's mm -hmm. that's going to be difficult. Most, most internal controls were designed around people kind of being in the office, you know, paper documents being available. Um, moving all of that electronically introduced some holes potentially or some risk to your internal controls, you'll need to evaluate those. And I think in this presentation, we'll go into a little bit about some of the steps in the process you need to consider that will become impacted um, by the remote workforce. And then lastly, of course, you know, it, it's kind of your enhanced internal control thoughts. One of the things that's scary about economic downturns or really any time of change or chaos is the increase in crime. And that's no different with cyber crime or with payment fraudsters who are trying to intercept your payments. And so having reduced risk around payment fraud um, is going to become really important and, and you're likely going to receive more kind of BEC, business email compromise or phishing scams uh, while we're, we're kind of struggling through this economic time. Thanks for that overview, Josh. And we're going to go right into each step and how companies on the line right now can create a payments continuity uh, plan along with their business continuity plan. And so the first level is obtaining essential tools. I know a lot of us here at Invoice Pay, we had to make sure that we had the tools uh, to make sure that we could essentially do our job. And so, um, Josh, what are some of the uh, uh, challenges that our AP team has faced in terms of working remotely? It, I would say probably the biggest is paper. A lot of things are still done by paper. Mail comes every day, invoices come every day. Checks need to go out a lot of times unless you have a check printer um, in a paper form. Somebody needs to stuff the check, print the check, and send it out. That's all very difficult to do um, if you're really enforcing a strict work from home policy. So most mm -hmm. likely, and we saw it kind of in the poll survey, 9% are, are still going into the office. Um, mm -hmm. Most likely somebody's going to have to go in and, and do those things. And that's going to be very challenging. 
I would add to that kind of conversations and, and interactions between not only your suppliers, but internal business partners such as treasury and procurement. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, mm -hmm. will become very important and, and a little more difficult um, doing so remotely. Awesome. But I also want to just touch upon the, the mo morale aspect and just keeping people motivated. Um, mm -hmm. We're sort of being tasked today with sort of playing dual roles. So a lot of us have kids at home. Um, how do you make sure you and your, your, you know, take care of your kids at home, educate them, um, give your spouse a break uh, if, uh, as they need one as well. Um, I know with our team, we're specifically starting every morning with a just a Zoom call, just to check in, just to see everybody, um, just mm -hmm. to build a little morale, just to get people uh, additionally motivated and pumped up for the day. Um, it is challenging times. If you watch the news at all, that may not be too fun. So we are really trying to work on sort of the morale side and just keeping people uh, excited about the opportunity um, to really help organizations out there today that uh, might need it. Thanks for that, uh, Derek. And the level two now is, okay, so we've done level one, if you grab all your tools that you need to do the job. The second uh, level and what a lot of people uh, really want a lot of information on is how to establish a remote workforce. And on the screen uh, that we see right here, Josh, this is a really long and lengthy, typical AP process that's full of manual processes, probably uh, you know cabinets filled of paper checks. Um, how can AP teams establish a remote workforce with this typical yeah. AP. and you kind of have to go through this whole process and and identify what you're doing remotely how you're enabling your remote teams where you need people to actually come in who's coming in um, so you don't have a group of people showing up at the office and then you know in each step throughout this process kind of call out you know this is what we can do here's what we can address either you know physically or currently we can do remotely and where you have those gaps where you're not able to address it today remotely there are technologies out there we're going to talk a little bit about payment automation technologies and that will help streamline a lot of this and avoid kind of the the in the office direct contact required you know i mentioned signing checks or mailing checks but there's so many so much more to this uh, the other thing is as you have a remote workforce you want to reevaluate your internal controls that you established most internal controls were established especially around ap with the notion that they would be in the office, that the filing cabinets would be locked down, that you know limited people would have access to certain information. And so you just need to make sure as you go through this process, you're also identifying where there may be holes now in your internal controls, having a remote workforce. Thanks for so that. Josh, you mentioned, you, you mentioned the internal controls and you've said, kind of said that multiple times. Um, is the need for those internal controls, I know we're remote, but with the economic, downturn as well or you know talk a little bit about that and the the need or what that might look like with the economy being what it is today yeah i would say in a down economy the internal controls become even more important we mentioned fraud and and, and, and risk a little bit so you're you're really you're really going to want to focus on conserving cash right now and avoid avoiding risks cash is your most liquid asset and you don't want anything to go out the door that shouldn't um, so to ensure that, you need to make sure those internal controls are still in place. The right bills are being paid, the right invoices are being paid, POs are getting approved, all those approvals are still happening with your business partners before they reach AP. And then only the payments that absolutely need to go out are going out. Um, and that's, those are the kind of things you want to evaluate as you're going through these steps within the process. Thanks for that, guys. And so the next step after establishing a remote, a remote workforce is providing visibility and control. So you folks were just, I know Derek and Josh, you folks were just talking about cash flow and cash management. And so how is providing visibility, visibility and control, um, how is it uh, important and essential um, with the current situation that we're um, experiencing right now? Yeah, of course, we've talked about this a little bit already, the monitoring and maintaining and internal controls is going to be very challenging unless you've moved to some cloud-based or remote tools already and some automated technology um, that allows you to access it remotely. Uh, that's, that's going to be a big challenge. Um, shifting AP to focus more on cash outflow. So your AP team, you really don't want them spending time stuffing checks or, or mailing checks or, or just processing paper. You're really going to want your AP time, your AP folks to focus on managing your cash outflows, making sure that they're only the right payments, and only the prioritized payments are going out as you're conserving cash and, and monitoring um, your supplier payments. 
moving to paper-based payments or moving away from paper-based payments to electronic forms is really important um, or will help with a lot of that. Now you will still have some paper, but if you work with your suppliers, your recruitment team works with their supplier or your suppliers, trying to get that move to electronic payment will help streamline a lot of this. Um, there's also other things the AP team is really going to need to engage more deeply if they haven't already with their treasury or procurement teams. Or if there, there aren't treasury and procurement teams readily available, you're taking on kind of the, some of those responsibilities as you do want to conserve cash and you do want to reach out to your suppliers. You'll be reaching out, trying to renegotiate terms, trying to renegotiate pricing, uh, supply, or, 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 or quantities, that sort of thing. There will be a lot of discussions from your parent team with your suppliers, and your AP team should be very closely tied to that so they understand what's changing and, and, and how that in, impacts the payments that you make to the suppliers. Thanks for that, Josh. It seems like with all of the uh, teams that are on the screen, the AP team, procurement, and treasury, you know, a lot of their priorities are now shifting. And so what better time than to work together, uh, not only for the company, but to make sure that, you know, everyone's on the same page. The next uh, level that we wanted to talk about is mitigating payment fraud and risk. I know with a lot of people now working remote and now heavily, you know, uh, using email and other ways of communication um, to create, um, uh, to establish a working uh, for, uh, workforce. Uh, Josh, how do you think um, mitigating payment fraud and risk is um, how that world's gonna be for AP teams now that everyone's working remote? I know there's um, phishing scams that are um, out there that could happen. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's a scary notion. You've got kind of this you know, convergence of two very difficult and challenging situations. One, we're sending our workforce remotely, especially our AP teams. And then two, you know, the economic environment that we're in. Uh, AFP did a study a few years ago that showed 74% of organizations had were targeted, um, had actual or attempted payment fraud. I can only imagine that those attempts are going to increase. 8% of the respondents in that same survey uh, said they had lost, had payment fraud losses of half a percent to one and a half percent of annual revenues. That means if you're a, ten, a billion dollar annual revenue company, You've, you've lost five to 15 million in, in, in payment fraud. So this is already a very scary and kind of concerning situation. A lot of fraud happens on check, but that check fraud is declining. What's really been in, on the uptick are these more sophisticated kind of cyber attackers who are attacking mm -hmm. ACH payments through the vendor bank information or attacking wire payments. And so it's gonna be important that you're monitoring as you're shifting, if you're shifting from check to electronic through this time that you're monitoring the security and the controls you have are in place for allowing for electronic payments because they are different than check. Uh, the banks don't assume liability like they do with a check payment or provide uh, positive pay or positive payee services on ACH and wire. Um, it, is, it is also concerning to see this quote from Bleeping Computer that fraudsters are starting to actually target some of these online tools like Microsoft Office 365 and Google G Suite. So make sure that you're evaluating these cloud tools and these remote working enablement tools that you are keeping security and, and, and risk mitigation in mind and at the forefront because the fraudsters are, are there's a heightened level of fraud in, in difficult economic times or in times of change. Thanks, hey, Josh, that. on that point, you're talking, we talked uh, in the last couple of slides around uh, potentially moving to electronic payment methods um, and with the increase of fraud on the rise and especially with electronic payments. Any tips or tricks that you have or thoughts around sort of how to mitigate and as you validate some of that information or what that process may look like? Yeah, there's there's definitely the payment methods and you know Derek, I think it'd be good for us to have this follow-up webinar we've been talking about around risk mitigation. Payment methods will play into your level of fraud risk. So as I mentioned, checks historically been the highest, continues to be the highest, but it's slowly declining. What's increasing greatly are electronic payment forms like wire and ACH. So ACH is actually one of the fastest growing areas of payment fraud, the ACH credit and intercepting through business email compromise or through phishing scams, intercepting payments and updating kind of the bank information for that vendor before a big payment goes out, right before it goes out. Um, and the inability to kind of recover those payments has made it even higher level of exposure. So, you know, having those controls in place, evaluating payment methods will be an important Paying your suppliers by a virtual card will help you not only reduce your costs by the rebate you receive, 
but will also allow you to put in even more controls with your supplier payments. So there's varying levels of control you can do around just payment method, but then also evaluating you know, your remote enablement tools, the software you're using, um, as well as you know, it, ensuring and maintaining those internal controls, even with remote workforce, will help reduce those risks. Uh, one of the things we offer at Envoice Pay, of course, is we manage all of the banking information for, our, for, the, for your suppliers. Um, we have a network and we, we keep that all very safely secure and invest a lot of money and time in ensuring that that bank information is secure and that the right supplier is getting paid. Um, so finding a, a payment provider who's willing to accept that responsibility and assume that liability will be key as well and, very, and help very much in reducing your payment risk. Thanks for that, Josh and Derek. And so with all of this that, uh, you know, you folks have gone with the payments readiness model, what are something, what is something that businesses can take advantage of now? Yeah, so I, I, as I mentioned briefly before, I think there are payment automation technologies out there and payment providers who can help with a lot of the things we've been talking about and a lot of the concerns that you're going to uh, be faced with, you know, through the next six months to a year. Uh, AFP did a study on, you know, the reasons why companies adopt payment automation technologies, and I think it's very telling and very relevant in this case. So they found that the majority of uh, the respondents um, said cost savings. So cost savings was kind of the number one reason. Fraud control was number two, and there's a lot of truth to that, and we talked a little bit about that. I hope we'll talk some more about that. I think there's important things you can get out of the payment automation um, around fraud control. And then number three, which we haven't talked a whole lot about, but is also a very key concern, are your supplier relationships and your customer relationships, meaning your internal business partners, the people who are actually securing the services and need to get those suppliers paid in order to keep the supply chain rolling and keep the business going. What the payment automation technology advantages are, are those very things. So maintain your operational workflow, even in a remote environment, and especially in a remote environment, if you get the right automation technology, increase your visibility and control, and, and, and therefore reduce your risk or shift some of that risk to your partner, um, and improve the communication. So what I really like about the invoice pay service is that they own this network of suppliers and buyers, and that they facilitate or handle a lot of the supplier questions that come up. Um, and, and the issues that come up around payments. You know, we never really introduced ourselves and who we are as a company uh, in the beginning of the webinar. So Derek, can you give a little bit information of who we are at Invoice Pay? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Invoice Pay is a wholly owned subsidiary of FleetCore. Um, for those of you who don't know FleetCore, FleetCore is a publicly traded company. Um, they are the 14th largest, or we are the 14th largest payment co uh, company uh, in the world, um, processing just under 2.9 billion um, transactions. Um, invoice pay, we solely focus on business to business payments. Um, and you can see some of the key sort of statistics here in terms of size of network, the payment volume we process, so forth and, and so on. Um, but we are a business to business payments automation company. And uh, really the importance now uh, for our organization is to really help companies, um, as I mentioned, that may be struggling with some of the essentials of just getting payments out the door or are struggling in the remote workforce or with the remote workforce and with the economic downtime. So we really want to be there for organizations uh, to help in any which way we can to answer questions. Um, but again, to, to really allow businesses to continue to operate uh, and to be able to execute on this uh, mission critical process of getting uh, supplier payments out the door. Just to let you folks know, we are gonna have another webinar that's happening um, in April. It's called a payment strategy in our new world. And with everyone that's on this webinar, we're gonna send you a follow-up email and we're also gonna send you a link where you can register for that webinar. And so what's next, like I said, uh, we would love to know how we can help you after uh, this webinar is done, a survey will pop up. And if you could please take that survey and let us know how we can help you, we'll be able to make sure that um, someone from Invoice Pay will be able to contact you right away. And if you have any, uh, if you have any questions in terms of uh, resources, you can go to invoicepay.com. And on your right-hand side, before we end the webinar, there is a handout that you can download. We want to thank you all for coming on um, to this webinar as we all work uh, remote from home. And so we just want to 
say thank you, take care and be safe everyone.